Hi guys, this is Marvin from ShopsadaPage.com and today we are going to do an unboxing review of the Motospeed CK62 mechanical keyboard from Bangu.com. Now this uses Otemu mechanical switch and works in both wired and wireless mode. As usual, we're going to talk about everything you need to know about this keyboard. With that said, let's get into it. So right here, I have the packaging for the Motospeed CK62. At the side of the box, we have some info about the main features of this keyboard as well as Motospeed's contact information. And that's pretty much it, so let's pop this open, shall we? So inside the box, we have a paperwork right here. I assume this is the usual warranty guide. We also have the user manual, which as usual is written in both Chinese and English. Next, we have the cable, which fortunately is a USB Type-C cable. However, it is not gold-plated and not braided, but at least it has a built-in Velcro strap right here. As you can see, the keyboard is well protected by these foam paddings. Pretty standard packaging for a budget mechanical keyboard with a foam sleeve right here. Let me just place this aside for a second. And lastly, inside the box, we have the usual plastic keycap puller. Now, let's take a closer look at the Motospeed CK62. At first look, as you can see, it is pretty slim and is quite lightweight as well, but it doesn't have much flex on it unless you put an unusual amount of force. It weighs around 451 grams, which is way lighter than most 60% keyboards that I've tried. Since this is a 60% keyboard, we only have the alphas, numbers, modifiers, and all the basic keys. We don't have dedicated arrow keys, function keys, nav cluster, and numpad, which in a 60% keyboard are all available using layers. This keyboard uses the ANSI standard layout, so looking for custom keycaps will not be a problem. Now, looking at its front side, we can see that it has a floating keys design rather than the high-profile case that we usually see on most 60% keyboards. Flipping it on its side, we can see that the bottom housing is actually pretty slim as well and has a chamfer design at the bottom. The housing features a low-profile design so the key switches are actually visible. It also uses the ergonomic OEM profile for the keycaps. Now, at the back, we have the USB Type-C port that is weirdly placed at the center so looking for a custom case for this would be quite challenging. At the bottom, we have the four small rubber feet without adjustable stand and the Moto Speed logo at the center. We also have the usual technical information right here and of course, the on and off switch for the Bluetooth connectivity. Going back in front with regards to the fonts used, it uses the similar typeface that we typically see on most budget keyboards with just different legends for the layers, lighting modes, and whatnot. Right here, we have the function key that we can use to trigger the different layers. This keyboard actually has four different layers that can be activated up here using the keys 1 to 4 with a rather unusual and to be honest, unfortunate layer implementation. We'll talk more in depth about that later. So the first layer is the function keys here up top, and then the second layer is the nav cluster right here. The third layer is the arrow keys here at the bottom, and the fourth and last layer is the arrow keys here at the WASD keys. With regards to other important keys right here, we have the mode key for switching between wired and wireless mode. We also have the reset key here using the escape button to reset the keyboard to factory settings. Right here, we have the keys for Bluetooth connectivity. You can actually connect this keyboard up to three devices. We also have the lighting mode keys here and the recording key here for custom lighting modes. And that's pretty much it with regards to the layout and legends. Overall, the design of the Motospeed CK62 is pretty good. It even has the silver aluminum backplate that for sure will help bounce that LED illumination. I also like its slim profile and this white version really looks clean. Now before we move on, let me pop the specifications on the screen so that you can check it out. Now let's discuss the different features and functions of this keyboard. So like I said, this keyboard works in both wired and wireless mode. And to change between them, you just have to press F and plus tab for a few seconds until the caps lock starts flashing and turns into color green. This means we are currently working in wired mode. Press F and plus tab again to change to wireless mode, indicated by color blue on the caps lock. Now to connect your device via Bluetooth mode, you just have to press F and plus any keys between E, R, and T, and then press F and plus Q for a few seconds to start pairing mode. The caps lock will start flashing which will indicate that the keyboard is now ready to pair. Once you're able to pair the keyboard to multiple devices, you can simply swap between them by pressing Fn plus the corresponding keys between E, R, and T. Other key combinations are the usual Fn plus escape to reset the keyboard and Fn plus windows key to lock the windows key and prevent start menu from popping. 
Now, let's discuss the different lighting modes of the Moto Speed CK62. To change lighting modes, you just have to press Fn plus menu key and then press Fn plus control key to change colors. The Moto Speed CK62 actually has a whopping 19 different lighting modes, so we'll just breeze through them here. You can change the direction of the lighting modes by pressing Fn plus right alt as you can see here. And then you can also change the color by pressing Fn plus right control in 8 different solid colors. You can also adjust the brightness by pressing Fn plus I and Fn plus U. The caps lock will flash indicating that you're on the maximum or minimum setting. You can also adjust the speed by pressing Fn plus P and Fn plus O. Again the caps lock will flash when maximum or minimum settings has been reached. And lastly, you can also set up your own custom lighting modes by pressing Fn plus any of the keys between 5 to 0. Press 1 and then press the forward slash to start recording. This will be indicated by the caps lock flashing. After which, you can start pressing the keys that you want and create your own custom lighting. Once you're done, simply press Fn plus forward slash to finish recording. Now you can easily access your custom lighting by pressing the key combination anytime you want. Now, here's how bright the LEDs are when all the lightings on this room is turned off. As you can see, it is pretty bright. Removing the keycaps, we can see that the LEDs are surface mounted into the board. But the switches have holes in it for the illumination to pass through properly. The LEDs used for this board features a true RGB color reproduction that can produce up to 16.8 million colors and that results to smooth transition between colors and animations. There are a few keyboards that I've tried before that only has 7 individual colors and can combine colors properly, so this is a good sign. One thing that I don't like about the LED illumination on this keyboard is that the caps lock has a world of its own. Its color will depend on what mode you are currently working with. For example, if you're on wide mode, the caps lock's color is green and then color blue when you're on Bluetooth mode. There's also no option to turn off its lighting even if you turn the brightness of the keyboard to zero. Although the color changes differently if you toggle it, there's no way to customize the caps lock's color since there is no software. Moving on, let's discuss the switches on this keyboard. This keyboard uses red switches and looking closer we can see that it is from the brand Otemu. The Otemu red switch is surprisingly decent and quite satisfying and not as scratchy as its blue version which is known to be scratchy and has a very high pitch sound when being clicked. The red version also has a very good resistance that requires 50 grams of actuation force which I really like compared to the optical Gatron Red that only requires 45 grams and like I said on my review of the Jik GK61 was too light for my liking. Now comparing the Otemo Red to optical Gatron Red and Cherry MX Red, the Otemo Red requires 50 grams of actuation force while the optical Gatron Red and Cherry MX Red both requires only 45 grams. In terms of smoothness, both the Otemo Red and Cherry MX Red feel scratchier than the optical Gatron Red. Having tested this, I feel like the best switch for my personal preference is the Gatron Black since it requires 50 grams of actuation force like this Otemo Red but with a much smoother travel. With regards to the keycaps, this one uses double shot ABS keycaps which means there is a separate translucent plastic injected inside it for the legends and for the illumination to pass through. It doesn't span across the keycaps though but it's really not an issue since the legend is only on top. Some keyboard has the injection spans across to help with the overall thickness of the keycaps, but it is not crucial for its intended purpose. With regards to the stabilizers, it doesn't have any factory lube and sometimes it comes off along with a keycap. Other than that, it doesn't have much throttle to it and it's perfectly fine without an annoying high pitch sound when being tapped, although you'll definitely feel some wobble. Now as usual, here are some typing tests so that you can have an idea how the Otemo Red switches sound in comparison with my other compact keyboards.
Now here's some size comparison for you guys for some of my compact keyboards just so you can have an idea in case you're planning to pick up either a 60%, 70% or a 10 keyless keyboard. But if in case you're just interested with 60% and 70% keyboards, here are some of mine. We have the Geek GK61, the Unpro 2, the Royal Clutch RK61, and the new Royal Clutch RK71 right here. So as you can see, they're almost the same across the board except for the RK71, which has a different form factor, so watch out for my review of this one as well. Now when it comes to the layer implementation, this is the worst part of this keyboard. The layer implementation is a total disaster. Good thing there's a workaround for it which I will show you later. Most 60% keyboards that I've tried use the F and key to toggle different layers just by pressing a combination of two keys. But with this keyboard, you toggle layers by actually activating and deactivating them which requires pressing the F and button alongside the corresponding number of the layer for 3 to 5 seconds. Here's an example. If you want to use the function rows up top, you will have to activate that layer by pressing Fn plus number 1 for 3 to 5 seconds until the LED on the number 1 key is turned off, after which the numbers row will now change to functions row. The same goes with the nav cluster, which you can activate by pressing Fn plus 2 for 3 to 5 seconds. For the arrow keys, which I think is the most important layer, you need to press Fn plus 3. And lastly, Fn plus 4 to switch WASD to arrow keys. This means every time you need those valuable keys, you have to press a combination of keys for 3 to 5 seconds, which I think is not very efficient, not to mention you have to memorize the corresponding number for each layer. Also, it doesn't help the fact that this keyboard doesn't have any software to possibly fix this issue. With that said, thankfully, there is a workaround for this using a software called AutoHotKey. Basically, you will use the caps lock button to toggle the different layers just by pressing a simple combination, much like other 60% keyboards normally does. Here's how to do it. First, you need to download the AutoHotKey software. Next, copy and paste the script on a notepad. I'll put a link on the description below for the script. Rename it and save it as .ahk. And then to run it, just simply double click it. You also have to add it to your startup program so you won't have to double click it every time your computer starts. Now with regards to the script, this line will make the caps lock status to always turn off. But you will still be able to use it with this line right here which will allow you to toggle caps lock by pressing shift plus caps lock. Now these lines will allow you to toggle the arrow keys as well as the nav cluster following the legends on the keyboard. And this one will allow you to toggle the tilde and back quote that is actually not available by default. That is weird, how can they forget about that right? And then these lines right here will allow you to toggle the function keys up top. And then this one will allow you to use the backspace as a delete key. While these lines right here will allow you to adjust the volume and mute the audio by pressing caps lock plus letters C, X, and Z. And lastly, this couple of lines right here will allow you to toggle print screen and pause. Now what's good about this is that you can actually customize this keyboard further using this script. You can add more functions basing from your own personal preference. You can check the auto hotkey help for the codes or simply google them. With this simple workaround, you will be able to use this keyboard normally as it should by default. So if you've already bought this and it's driving you crazy, then I hope this workaround will help you. I got this information by the way from some reddit users that provided this workaround. Huge thanks for them and I'll put the link below if you want to check it out. Now with the layer implementation issue out of the way, let's finally discuss the performance of this keyboard. As mentioned earlier, this keyboard works in both wired and wireless mode and can be connected up to 3 devices. And as per my testing, switching between devices is pretty quick. In terms of range, even if this keyboard only uses Bluetooth 3.0, which technically has a shorter range than 4.0. It is pretty substantial. I was able to use this keyboard as far as I can until I can't read the text on my monitor anymore. It has a transmission range of up to 10 meters. With regards to latency, as by my testing, there's no difference between wired and wireless mode. Both have almost the same latency as you can see here. But sometimes I feel like there's a little bit of intermittent delay, possibly due to the fact that it's only using Bluetooth 3.0, which is not as reliable compared to 4.0 signal strength wise. It is not catastrophic to the point that it is not usable but I encounter it from time to time. Now this keyboard has NKRO or NK rollover feature in both wired and wireless mode, which means you can press all keys without conflicts. As per my testing, it actually works not only in wired mode which is already expected, but works also in wireless mode through Bluetooth. Usually based on other wireless keyboards that I've tried, NKRO only works via wired so this is actually very nice especially for couch gaming. With regards to the typing experience, I'm actually quite surprised with the Otema Reds. 
I didn't have much good expectations with this, especially having tried the High Peach, Scratchy Otemi Blue, which I personally didn't like. But with the Otemo Red, since it is linear without any click nor tactile bump, the scratchiness is not very overwhelming. I also like the 50 grams actuation force. I feel like it is just the right amount for me to type precisely without over fatiguing my fingers. Now when it comes to gaming experience, much like any other linear switch, it is very good. The 50 grams actuation force is nice to prevent unnecessary movements and its linear feature allows you to bottom out the keys quite easily compared to a switch with tactile and click characteristics. It also helps the fact that these red switches are relatively silent. So it should be ideal for streamers so that the keyboard won't get in the way with other much important sounds. When it comes to battery life, this keyboard has a built-in 1300mAh of battery. Charging time as per specifications is 3 to 4 hours, and it has this red LED indicator on the USB Type-C port. As per my testing, I left it charging for the whole day, and the LED actually didn't turn off, so I wasn't able to really gauge the actual charging time. Working time is rated up to 10 hours, and that of course will vary if you use it with LED illumination or not. I've been using this for more than 24 hours now but with power saving mode kicking in from time to time if I am away from the keyboard. Like I said it also has a power saving mode that lets the keyboard sleep if not being used for a certain period of time. So now I think I've tackled everything that you need to know about this keyboard. So to conclude, the Moto Speed CK62 is a budget 60% keyboard that has a lot of potential for being decent to say the least. It has a decent build quality with floating keys design if you're into that. It also has a very bright true RGB lighting surprisingly decent Otemo Red switches, and works in both wired and wireless mode. Aside from quirks with things like intermittent Bluetooth delay and caps lock LED having its own world, the only real reason it's hard to recommend this keyboard is the layer implementation. But if you're willing to tinker a little bit with the workaround which works like a charm by the way, this is a very good option if you're looking for a budget, compact keyboard that works in both wired and wireless mode, especially if you're planning to use this mainly for casual couch gaming wirelessly. If you're only going to use this for casual gaming, then I can recommend this. But if you're planning to use this as your main keyboard, especially for productivity, I suggest you look for other options. And I'll definitely help you with that. And there you have it guys, thank you for watching. Make sure to check the full article link below. Huge thanks again to Bangu.com for sending this in. You can get this from their official store link below, as well as the code that you can use for additional 10% off. Thank you for watching, subscribe if you like this, and see you next time. Have a great day.